Now, one of the biggest areas that golfers often struggle with is how do you take your golf game from the range with you out onto the golf course? We've all been there before where you've hit it well on the range, preparing for a big round of golf, and then you get onto the golf course and suddenly all those good shots suddenly elude you and you play really poorly and it's very demoralizing. So that's what this video is all about. And we're gonna offer some really simple and effective advice. Now the tips come from Katie Dawkins. She's one of the Golf Monthly top 50 coaches and she'll offer you a framework for practice and a way in which you can put that practice into play when you're on the golf course. Now a lot of this is about information gathering. And so that's why in this video, we've partnered up with Garmin. They've got a whole host of different technologies you can use both when you're on the range and also when you're out on the golf course to help you gather all that information you need to make smarter choices while you're on the golf course. Right, we've split this video up into three sections, off the tee, ball striking and pitching. And we're gonna start right here on the range. Okay, so we are gonna start with the game off the tee. And I guess the biggest difference between the range and the golf course is consequence. So when you're hitting balls on the range, you've got this big expanse to hit at. Yeah. There's, there's no consequence. It doesn't matter if you don't get it right, does it? So how do you make sure that your range session then is as valuable to you as possible when you're working through it? So you have to keep it more in line with how you would play on the course. And the way that I do that is I go through my pre-shot routine every single time. So every shot I hit, I'll walk behind the ball and I'll prepare myself and rehearse the swing. Right. And then I'll come in and hit the shot, exactly how I do in the course. And that, so when you're on the golf course, that puts you in a more positive state of mind, does it? it yeah, because I've, I trust it. I trust my routine. It's almost like having a safety blanket. That's interesting, because I think a lot of people know they have to have a pre-shot routine and it's something they use on the golf course, but how many of you watching this use it on the range as well? And Katie's talking about doing it on every single shot. It yeah. requires real discipline. Okay, Katie, why don't you hit one for us? Okay. Uh, we have the Garmin Approach R10, a portable launch monitor on the ground, so that will give me some feedback on the app about where it's going. You've got nowhere to hide. Sorry about that. That's, that's fine. <laughs> Lovely shot. Slight fade, straight down the middle. And that has gone, it's carried 195, it's gone 212. So a good shot, a nice shot, but the, one of the first shots that we've actually hit this yeah. morning. I think as you, you know, as you warm yeah. up, you'll probably start to hit it a bit further. But the question is, how do you then prepare specifically for the game off the tee with the different clubs that you'd be looking to hit? What would be the way you'd do it? So I'd be wanting to make sure I know my average carry with the driver, then perhaps with a fairway wood. Yep. So maybe my five wood I would pick just in case there's holes where this is just gonna to go too far. Yep. But also a rescue club as well off the tee. Right. I think it's important to have those three options in your bag for when you come across a hole that's got a lot of trouble halfway down it perhaps. Yeah, now that's a good question then is, you hit that one fairly well, I reckon you could yeah. probably hit them a bit better, but yeah. what are you looking to gain as the yardage that you have in mind? Is it your absolute best or is it somewhere in the middle? No, and I think this is the thing that people come a cropper with is that out on the golf course, they're clubbing themselves with the very best shot they've ever hit with that club. And of course that gets them into trouble because eight times out of 10, they'll come up a bit short. Right. So it's important to have the average yardages and it's important to perhaps write them down in a little notebook. Yeah, have them to To have that in your bag so you can go, oh, it's that far. Now, if I hit it that far, I won't go in the heather. Let's have a look and see what club does that for me. The other question I was going to ask you was about your dispersion. So this one has gone a little bit left. It's gone 14 yards left of the centre line. We would all, we, all of us have a, a tendency to miss either right or yeah. left. What would be yours, Katie? Mine would be, I would miss to the right. So I'm aware of what trouble is up on the right-hand side on a hole, and I will pick the safest route away from that. So I'll often aim left up a hole to allow for that. Okay, so uh, there's some really good advice there about how to practise. The question is, how do you then put that into play on the golf course? Let's go and find out. Okay, so you've done your homework on the range. You know your carry distances for your driver and your fairway wood, the other key driving clubs that you have in your bag. Plus you've done some work on your pre-shot routine and that this is where all of that should, should come to fruition and help you hit a good shot. But there's some more important thinking to do, Katie, isn't there? Tell us there what, do you, what do you need to do? So I think the fact that we've been on the range and we've done a bit of homework, our confidence should be much higher. If you haven't prepared, on the range so you haven't had a good practice, you haven't seen yourself hit those good shots, 
then chances are you can't visualize them. Yes. So it's really important to have that in the bank before you then expect yourself to do well out here. Yes, exactly. And then once you are stood here, it, a lot of it is about information gathering because you need to develop a picture for exactly where you need to hit the ball, don't you? Absolutely. And you need to know how far your clubs carry because we know that that bunker on the right is about 140 and the bunker on the left is about 174. And I know that my five wood, for example, is going to carry both of those quite happily. And I've suddenly devised myself a lovely safe plateau to land my ball on. Yes. The header's about 200, isn't the it? Heather, well, the header is actually 210. It's 210, we know that because the... Yeah, because the laser has told us that it's 210. But importantly, you don't have to hit it 209, do you? <laughs> no, you don't. And I think it's important to hit a club that you like. And there, this is the thing, you look at your distances and go, well, my three wood goes this far, so I must hit that. Well, you don't have to. You could be 10, 15 yards further back than that and probably be more likely to hit a good shot because you like your five wood right. more than your three wood. You've had more success rate with it. Therefore, you're more likely to commit to the swing and finish it and be way more confident with the way you hit the shot. This is it. And this is where, Katie, your concept of having a personal par really comes into play, isn't it? It's something that we've talked about before, but explain to us what is a personal par and how does it work in a scenario like this? It's very easy for a golfer to stand on the tee, look at the scorecard and go, wow, this is a par five. I've got to get down the hole in five shots. That's not the case. You have a handicap for a reason. That's the wonderful thing about golf, is you're on a kind of fairly even keel with the people you're playing because of your handicap. So if you were playing off a handicap of 18, your personal par on this hole isn't five, it's six, because you get an extra shot on each hole. So you would stand here thinking, well, actually, I've got another shot to play with. So you can then start to devise yourself the safest route up that hole, yes. taking into account the shots, the shots you love to hit and the clubs that are your favorites. And I think you can sort of start to make a picture almost, especially using the course planner on your watch. Yes. You can almost plot yourself a nice little safe route. So the bunker on the right is 145 to carry, the bunker on the left is 174 to carry, the heather to reach it is 210. So this is a club that should deal with all of that really, isn't it? It should do. And I'm looking in the distance at that white post. Okay. So although that's in line with my lovely little safe zone, it's way further than this is going to go. Yes. But it's important to pick a target beyond your landing area. Why is that? That's because you're visualising then a good shot. Also, by focusing on something in the distance, it helps all the hazards and all the trouble you're trying to get over to sort of merge and blur away, if you like. Okay, Katie, so run through the routine that we've already talked about. And, uh, and hit it for us. So really important, we're going to do one rehearsal, make sure we make decent contact with the turf. I always do it looking down the hole. So nice back and through, tickle of the turf, point my club at my target in the distance, the white post in this. Yep. Pick a mini target and just try and recreate what I did on the range. Oh, oh. Straight at is the that post. on that white post? It is. It's very good, and it's in a really, it's in that safe spot. It's, it's in super a perfect. Safe. Yeah, you're then able to go and attack the green. You don't have to play perfect golf to get the ball round in a lower score. But what you do need to do is you really need to think smart. And if you can employ what Katie said there, it should make a big difference. Okay, so for the second part of our video, we're gonna focus on one of the areas that I think a lot of players really struggle with when it comes to taking their game from the range to the course, and that's ball striking, yes. particularly with your eyes when the golf ball's on the ground. So Katie, I'm going to start by asking you for just a straight up tip. Give us a drill, give us a tip that people can use while they're on the range to really help them with their ball striking. So I think first of all, starting with what people don't do a lot of the time when they're not striking it well. Right. They're not getting the ground under the ball, whether that's the grass, the tee peg, whatever the ball sat on, they're not making contact with it because they're almost trying to lift the ball in the air. Right, okay. So that's the first reason that sometimes it doesn't work. So that's what we want to focus on on the range. By placing something down just in front of the ball, whether it be a little tee peg, a leaf, a feather, whatever you can find, you've got something that you're just aware of that's after the ball. What that's going to help you to do is going to help you to hit the ball first and be aware you've got to collect that little mini target just after the ball as well. Okay, So yeah, it helps you stay lower for longer. So seven iron shot. We've got the R10 running again. Very nice. Okay, so Katie, the carry distance for that was 140. Total distance 148. Uh, five yards left of the center line. Looked perfect to me. It I felt think, good though. Yeah, a really good <laughs> shot. Now, 
Obviously, you want to spend some time on your ball striking to make sure that you're, you feel comfortable running through your routine, as we've yep. already talked about. But you also need to gather some information in this uh, session. So what information are you trying to gather about your irons? You're trying to gather your average carry with them. Right, so it's a very similar way that we did with, oh, with the driving. Oh, absolutely, 100%. So that you know when you're out on the golf course that your 7-iron will carry over the bunker just short of the green. That, that kind of information. Well, why it's is not the, a guessing Why game. is the total distance less important? Well, because the conditions are going to vary. So sometimes you're going to be landing the ball in the summer on quite hard ground. Sometimes you're going to be landing the ball in the winter on soft ground. The ball's not going to get any roll at all. So it's important to know that you're going to carry any trouble. And this is also really important to say, this is about developing your confidence so that when you get to the golf course, you know what it feels like to have the ball coming flush out the middle of the golf club from, Absolutely. You know, time after time. By using that drill and then gathering the data, it can really help you. Okay, so with your iron play, this is all about good quality ball striking when you're on the golf course, Katie. You've given us a really good drill to use on the range to make sure that you're getting that ball first, ground second contact that we all need. But you stood in the, on the golf course here, you've got trouble all in front of you. You still need to focus on that good quality contact. How do you do it when you're on the course? So on the range, we put a little something, rather a little mini target ahead of the ball, just to encourage ourselves to stay lower for longer. Out on the course, it's very easy to suddenly get result orientated. You suddenly worry about the water, the bunkers, what happens if it goes wrong? What happens with that then is you come up on the ball, therefore you don't get the grass underneath it. Right, and yes. You don't get. So just having an awareness of what's ahead of the ball helps you just to keep the club a little bit lower, therefore get little ball, then the big ball. See, the last thing you all need to be doing during a medal at your golf clubs is go, hang on everyone, I'm just going to stick a little something or other just in front of the ball because you can't touch your line of play. So you can just have a look. We're on the golf course. It's a natural surface, it's grass. There's some little bits and pieces on the ground. We've actually got a little twig just in front of our ball. So when I stand behind my ball and go through that really important pre-shot routine and I point the club at the target line, draw a line down, I'm going to pick something just ahead of the ball on that. That's simple, it's effective, it's something we can all do. The other part that we can all get, do and get right is figuring out the yardages, the work that we've done on the range to work out our carry yardages, you need to now apply it. So the shot that we've got here, the second shot into 16 here at West Hill, the back of the green, the laser is telling me is 164, flag is 160. To cover the bunker on the right is 152, that's to carry that. Yeah. So what club are you gonna play? What's the key yardage of all of that that you're trying to take into to account? So I want to carry the bunker, but at the same time, it's a really good idea when you're going for your approach shots to actually focus on hitting the middle of the green. And my watch says 153 to the centre, so I'm going to hit something I'm confident on average, and it's really important that part, on average, goes 150 yards. Right, Katie, so you're going to have to hit this for us. Now, it is quite dewy this morning. You just gave me a very good tip in this scenario. What is it? So, when there is dew on the ground, you can actually see where your club hits the world. And that's important, that gives you immediate feedback. And for us, immediate feedback, if you've done a good swing, is real, real confidence booster. So you would have picked your little mini target just ahead of the ball, but then, so we know where we're aiming because we've got that spot. Then you're gonna set up level with the ball and you're gonna do your practice swing back and through. Yeah, and you can see where and you can the ground. And you can really see. Yeah. So I can see that my first point of contact would have been the ball. After that, I've made a nice little neat divot mark ahead of that so i know that i'm collecting that mini target that we were using on the range i'm ticking that box i've committed to the shot and i've hit what's under the ball yes and the g really highlights them. go for it lovely great strike now where's that going middle green. of the green it's fine very decent, good. Decent two part, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's just a, a really good way to think. It doesn't need to take you an awful lot of time, but just having the awareness to think about some of these factors while you're on the golf course should really help you shoot lower scores. Okay, so for the final part of our video, we're looking at pitching. Now, pitching, Katie, is one of those areas that coaches like you will tell amateurs like me, you need to focus on this because it's the fastest way to save you shots out on the golf course. But you've got to practice it, right? Yes. And so the first question is, how do you practice your pitching? Well, I think, like you say, it is. this is like your score zone. So if you can get your wedges actually hitting the greens, you are going to save shots. It's quite simple. 
but a lot of people don't like doing the half shots, three quarter shots. So you need to know your wedge distances with a full swing first and foremost. That's your first port of call. Right. And we can do that on the range. Yes, you can. And it helps to have a, a laser to identify how far the flags are. So I've already done it and the first flag is 71, second flag is uh, 83, and the third flag is 109. So Katie, why don't you hit yep. a full shot with your, which cover is this? This is my sand wedge, so it's 54 degrees. Right, fine. And we've got the uh, approach R10 on the floor as well, so I'll be able to get some feedback. Okay. Right, good shot, Katie. Now that's carried 74. And again, the carry yardages are what you're looking for. You're looking at average carry yardages. And I guess having a good understanding for how far a full, you know, wedge shot goes for each of your wedges, maybe your 9 iron, etc., is going to be really useful to you. But if you really want to get good at pitching, you need to add an extra dimension to everything. What is that? So the extra dimension that you need is to be able to control the length of your swing. Because it's all very well knowing how far you hit a full shot, but we're not always going to have a full shot out there. No. And people try and manufacture that less length by slowing down and decelerating. We all know what that yeah, results fat shots. in. Yeah, I've done that Lovely before. big old fat shots. And you think that was a lovely drive, what a waste. Yeah. And so it's, it's just a point of frustration yeah. for everybody. Okay. So you can practice this. And how, so how do you, what's the way that you think about it? So one of the best visuals that I tend to use when I'm coaching is that your head is 12 o'clock and you're doing a length of swing that's almost nine bang through to three. Okay. So it's like a half swing. Yeah. And you would work on your averages like we talked about before. So the average distance that say you'd hit between seven and 10 balls doing that length swing with each of your clubs. Yes. Now you can get more uh, in depth in this. You can do sort of 10 oh, o'clock swings. Yeah, you can lengthen but, it. But we're suggesting in this instance, just to get a foothold in all of this, that yes. nine till three swing with each of your clubs through to, I guess even up to seven iron. Yeah, maybe. even up to a seven or a six iron. If you imagine you're playing Lynx golf, Lynx golf out by the seaside, you need to bump and run that ball in. You need to be able to control how far you carry it. Yeah and obviously the result there on in. Yeah. So it's important to go all the way through your clubs, but initially just your sort of four wedges or so would be sufficient. Would be a good start. Yes. So I'm now interested to find out how much a nine to three swing takes okay. off your normal full pitching swing shot, which was, as we know, carry distance 74. So yeah, uh, yeah hit a full, uh, sorry, hit a, a nine to three uh, sandwich shot for us. Lovely. Okay. And now that's interesting, Katie, because that's uh, carried 60. Yes. So there's a 14 yard uh, carry distance gap between those two shots. And I hit that, that pretty well. You hit that, that okay. That's probably one of my better wedge shots. Right. So I probably wouldn't take that, probably more than I'd normally hit my nine to three okay. on average. Yeah. So that's an important point is not to take. That's why it's so important to do the sort of seven to 10 shots. shots. Yes. Okay, fine. So once you've got that, um, that average for each of the shots, then you can do that with each of the different clubs. Yeah. And I, I guess a key point here is practice, just the repetition of being comfortable Absolutely. hitting those half shots. Yeah, and, and when you're going through your routine on the course, you're rehearsing, you've got a definite place to go. That nine o'clock is a really good kind of band of distance to swing that club back and through. And obviously if you've written it down, you look at, you look at the yardage on the course and you go, what's that? Oh, that's my nine yeah. o'clock pitching wedge. Yeah. Or my nine o'clock. And the wedge. other great thing about this is that when you get to the golf course, this process gives you options as you're about to find out. Okay, so you've done all of that work on your pitching. You should have some confidence in hitting the numbers that you're trying to hit. But again, you need to be smart while you're out on the golf course. Now, Katie, the, the flag, I've lasered the flag, it's 80 to the flag. What is it to the back? What is it to the middle? So you've got 71 to the middle of the green. And like we mentioned, we've mentioned before, the middle of the green is just safe place. Yes. Safe option. So 71 to the middle, uphill a little bit. So we're going to take that into account, but it's 83 to the back. So hit one for us then, Katie. So this is a, this will be a full sand wedge shot for you, but we've got two clubs because we're going to, I'm going to ask you to play it in two different ways because this is the beauty of really getting to know your pitching distances. You can play these shots in different ways. Yeah. So I'm going to hit my full sand wedge, first of all. Lovely. That's Good, you know, that's actually, I think that's pin high. Would you say? Yeah, that's pretty literally, good. Literally, my full sandwich will go about 75, 80 yards. Perfect. So, my watch, you know, said 72, and actually, we went for the backyard just so it's perfect. Yeah, so we're going to play the same shot again, but with a 9 iron using that 9 to 3 action. 
and hopefully the ball will go sort of a similar sort of distance. Yeah, and, and the reason this is quite a good idea as well is there's no trouble in between us and the flag. So you can bump and run it in if you like, and a shorter swing is a lot safer. Yeah. A lot of golfers would stand there with a full sand wedge. That's a lot of golf swing if you catch it skinny. Yeah, and you can hit it's gonna go big a long way. pulls or pushes yeah. as with any other part of your game. So maybe this is the most consistent way of doing it. Absolutely, it's I the safest way of doing it. Yeah. And I'm, from where I'm stood, it's so interesting because it's a, a lot more of a driven ball flight. It's a lot lower. Um, but it's half the swing. It's run once it's gone onto the green. It's run probably a yard or two further than the first one, but not a huge amount. No, and, and probably the most important thing is if I hadn't quite caught that, say I had caught it a little bit skinny, there's not enough swing there to send me into a lot of trouble. I may be at the back of the green, but I'm not going to be really in a pickle. Yeah, so as I said before, this might feel like a really kind of advanced technique, but you can see from Katie's, the way that Katie's played it, it's actually really simple, but it does require that time on the range to make sure that you know what you're doing, because once you become comfortable with shots like this, they can really, really help you out on the course. So there you have it. That's our look at how you take your game from the range to the golf course. Yeah, and I think it's, it's not just about what you do on the golf course, it's about building good habits when you're practicing so that you are in fact practicing the same game here as you play out there. Yeah, it's a simple piece of advice but it requires real discipline and real thought to make sure that you get it right. Hopefully Katie's tips today will make a big difference. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.